Next up, the FAA has released a video that shows remote ID is confusing and uh, they're kind of misleading about it, and it's not a great world that we're going to see. We expect it. Jane, in emergency uh, services, you. Oh, sorry, Blunty. Didn't mean to uh, play audio over you. Go ahead. Oh, that's fine. No, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, um, we... The idea is basically, you know, this video from the FAA is supposed to give us an idea of what UTM looks like. If you don't know, that's UAS traffic management. So part of this whole RID thing is under UTM. The idea is that, like, hey, we need to have remote ID on stuff so that you know where they are in the sky and we can provide information to people who need it, like law enforcement and other people around. That's the premise. But they show in this video a lot of different examples of uh, scenarios. And I just think in a lot of cases, they're unrealistic. They miss, they like paint us, specifically FPV in a bad light. Um, and they show things that I think are just wrong or disingenuous. Uh, in this example you're showing here, mm -hmm. they provide, um, you know, basically a situation in which there's a, there's a baseball game going on. Yeah. But basically, there's a couple of different examples. In part one of this scenario, as the U.S. Uh, and Canadian Border Patrol personnel get set to play their softball game yeah, at Pierre let's, Field, let's, let's southeast play this. of the farmer's market, okay. traffic monitoring and FBI surveillance drones conduct operations over the park. A food delivery drone brings pizza to help the players carb load before the game yeah. then promptly departs the area. A recreational user named Danny carb is in the load. park nearby and watches as the softball game gets underway. He launches his UAS to get a better view, flying Danny repeatedly still has a session over the crowd. Five, so, uh, a local law enforcement official you, from the Oneida County Sheriff's Department notices Danny's UAS and notifies other law enforcement officers in Rome. A federal official from the FBI steps in to help retrieve the necessary information. The FBI official initiates a correlation query with the Federal Aviation Administration, which provides identifying information about the UAS and its operator. The FBI official uses this information to determine that Danny is a regular who commonly flies his drone at this park. The official is also able to determine that Danny does not have a waiver to operate over people and contacts Danny directly. <sighs> Poor Danny. Yeah. Um, so in that example, flying in that example, we, park. we have a kid flying a drone in a park and the FBI needed to be contacted to find out the information for this person. So we've had one police officer that noticed him. Other police officers were contacted. Those police officers reached out to the FBI. The FBI did a search on him so that he could get his information on the FAA website. And then they used that information to contact that pilot. Yeah, we need the FBI, FBI every time there's a random drone around, right? I mean, yeah. And that's how this works, because they don't want every cop having access to this database. So the cops will have to reach to federal agents that work for them, which in this case is the FBI. Um, other things that they mention here, they see that they say that uh, Danny is a regular person at the park. Well, how would they yeah, know how that? How do they know that? How do they know Danny flies well, there regularly? Well, it turns out that another part of this, they show a little bit later, is historical data. Because if you're in an area... <coughs> that's covered by what they call a USS, a UAS service supplier. Um, they are paying these UAS service suppliers to collect remote ID data in public places and then use that as historical data that will be logged on your account. So For, let's say you let's say okay. you go fly at, at the local park and there's a UAS, USS near the local park and you're close enough to get picked up by them, uh, one of their transceivers. Your, every flight you have will be logged in a historical data under your account in the FAA. So when anybody looks up your drone, They'll know exactly where you've been and when. Yeah. 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 And if you go back to the very, very beginning of remote ID, the original proposal for rulemaking, um, they were had the, they had a network requirement where every drone would have like an active cellular connection and would essentially broadcast this information back through the network to a central database. And, and we complained about that and that got removed and it was replaced with the broadcast requirement, which meant that you broadcast your information like a like a license plate in the sky, they say. Uh, but it's only accessible for the time that you're broadcasting it in the location that you're broadcasting it. But of course, much like the uh, what's that aircraft database that people built that let everybody know where Elon Musk's plane was. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, flight aware, not flight. Uh, flight aware is one of them. It was. But, uh, yeah. It was a third party. Flight Radar 24, maybe? Who captured the broadcast data, yeah. collated it into a database, and whoops, now we have oh, this information. ADSB exchange. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's it. ADSB. 
Um, and it seems like the FAA expects that the same thing will happen with remote ID, that they will build databases uh, allowing them to have historical information about who flew where. And now they're going to be linking that to your, your uh, FAA identifier and making that information accessible to law enforcement. And in yeah. some ways, Blunty, none of this is new. Like the idea that a cop could see a drone, look up the remote ID identification for the drone and find out who the pilot is. That's the point of remote ID. But it's super annoying to watch this video and there is no representation a positive representation of hobbyists at all. In every case, it's like, look at these guys doing a survey. Look at this guy rescuing somebody. Look at this drone delivering. And there's an annoying hobbyist out there getting in the way and messing it all up. And it's super fucking annoying. Sorry, I'm swearing again. Mm. Yeah. Mm. One other one other part of the video shows two ladies at a bench and they're on their phone. And it says, you know, with your with a well, now with remote ID, you can look at your phone and you'll know who's legitimate and who's not. But that's just a lie because number one, you lie. look at your you look at your app and all it shows you is who has remote ID. So you see, yep, they have remote ID. That doesn't tell you anything about why they're there or if they are legitimate or not. And it also doesn't include the sub two hundred fifty gram drones, which will not legally need remote ID, but they think will because the app, they've been told right. that if it's not on the app, it's bad. Right. They're going to look at the app. They're not going to see the drone. And they're going to go, oh, you're illegitimate. They don't yeah. know yet. So it's really disheartening. It's really disheartening. Um, uh, I know that every time we do a story like this, we talk about how that the wins that we have gotten, and I say we, I and I mostly mean Guy, P, organizations like FPV Freedom Coalition and Flight Test Community Association who have actively fought and put in the work to try to get wins for hobbyists and have gotten some wins for hobbyists. And we talk about the fact that the wins are largely invisible uh, because, number one, they are small in the grand scheme of things, but they are there. And the, the, the L's, the losses, are extremely visible and it makes it feel like we're not getting anything. Um, it, but, it, and I tell myself that, but watching these videos, it feels so disheartening. Uh, it feels really, it feels like we really don't have a seat at the table. Yeah. Also just to throw in the end here, I'll give a shout out to XJet. We also linked his video, but XJet's the one who pointed out that this existed. <laughs> uh, so we could review this video for you. Tell you how dumb it is. Yeah. Well, um, all righty. Well, it's dumb. And shocker, the, 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 the view that the FAA has for how the future will be is dumb as well. Uh, I'll still be flying drones. Yeah. But uh, uh, people are out. There's a couple of questions in the chat. Um, still no official free is. Yep, that's right. As far as we know, uh, there will be some exceptions to this. But I mean, you might see AMA fields getting suddenly approved. But anything other than AMA fields will likely have to go through the free API PEA process, which is an environmental assessment that needs to make sure that they're okay to be where they are. And as far as we know, we have to wait on a waiting period for them to complete all that, and then it's like 60 days ish. So we're going to come up to the wire probably for anywhere that's not an AMA field. I expect. It's, I don't want to get too deep in this, but the PEA is listed to specifically say existing flying sites. There's no definition of that. So is you've been flying somewhere every week. Is that an existing flying site? I would say so. The FAA, yeah. though, doesn't even agree that your backyard is an existing flying site because it can't be a FRIA. So I don't right. have an answer for you. What I expect, yeah. what they mean by existing flying site is the conversations they've had with the AMA. And they expect it to be an AMA site. So that's why I say I expect the AMA sites will get approved sooner. And everything else will have to go through this programmatic environmental assessment. So. Yeah. Uh, and the AMA is, is just... Uh eventually the AMA will also get screwed by this process is the beautiful thing. Uh, right now yeah. they're willing to throw uh, FPV hobbyists and drone pilots under the bus because they're flying fields. They feel like they can carve out <clears throat> exemptions for their flying fields. And uh, eventually they'll find out that they're not daddy's special beloved child either. And the FAA will screw them over too. And uh there you go.